everybody and welcome once again to Let's Play Tyranny. Yes indeed, we're on part three and I know it's only early days but I'm really really enjoying this, I really am. It's good to be back recording videos again after my little slight uh, break from doing so. But uh, yeah, really enjoying the early stages of Fate Binder Calvino. Look at her, I just love her, I just love her. She just looks so stern, I love her. Uh, right, anyway, before we start today's session in earnest, I'm going to cover one of the pieces of law. The reason why I'm doing it now is because we're not going to get too much time uh, in the next couple of parts or so, because there's a lot of uh, kind of story-based conversations and stuff happening, so any narrative is not going to be fed into a little bit later. But... Um, we're going to be time limited as to when we need to do things by before we have to read this edict. So uh, talking about the calendar and how the sort of time system works here might be useful. So I'll do that now and then we'll uh, get into today's session proper. So if you know all about time, then you might want to just skip forward a little bit. Otherwise, you can listen to me ramble on a bit for the next uh, three or four minutes. But the calendar... Of Kairos's empire, as it says here, is divided into 14 spans. A span is a month. Each span is 26 days long. It's divided into five weeks called fists. Think of a hand. Five fingers, curl them up, it makes a fist. Five days is one fist. Five fists, five weeks, is 25 days. The 26th day of the span is Kairos's day, which is a day of rest. The, uh, the day is named after the roles that Kairos considers important to the Empire. Warrior, healer, judge, farmer and smith. They are the five days of the fist. You may have noticed in the uh, conquest, I think it was, four, was it 428 when we started the conquest of the tears. 428 TR. You may have been thinking, what the hell is this 428 TR all about? Well, TR trans, uh, stands for True Reckoning. And that is the time um, from the uh, Kairos's first edict. So 428 TR, 428 True Reckoning, 428 years after uh, the Overlord's first edict. Gives you some sense of potentially how old Kairos might actually be. So they've got a bit more blurb about how the days are referred to, but, and there's also a little bit about the uh, spans here as well. Pause and read that if you're interested. So there you go. So we are currently on Judge's Day, which was... Bear with me. The, uh, uh, the third day of the week. Uh, 18th of the Span of Swords. There you go. So, so now we're down with the calendar. And... Uh, we're going to now press on to the disfavoured camp to speak with the Archons. It's going to take 2 hours and 45 minutes to get there. Are um, Calvina and Verse going to walk the 2 hours and 45 minutes in complete and utter silence? Of course they're not. They're going to start talking. So we're going to start talking with Verse now, but uh, this is essentially us talking on the way to the disfavoured camp. It's transpired that she was sent by the voices of Narat to escort us to the camp. Hell, an extra pair of hands to chop through any Oathbreakers is much welcome, hence why she's still with us. Need to talk? I suppose I can give you a moment of my time. What do you need? Of course you can. I'm a fate binder of <laughs> Jesus. Um, right, um, so we'll start with something that's not quite so personal, uh, and just Basically a bit small talk, asking her about her time with the Scarlet Chorus. The Scarlet Chorus is mostly for madmen and peasants with rusty daggers, but it's also a little niche of freedom that I never had. Once I survived training and met my Scarlet Fury sisters, I saw a different side of the howling mob. Survived training? <clears throat> Calvina asking more about this training. For new recruits shoved to the front lines, training means surviving the first battle. Anything beyond that is for the fighters who show potential, whether as blade dancers or arcane madmen. There's nothing in the world like getting put through the paces as a Scarlet Fury. Every day is a test of your commitment and passion. Failure means death. 
The first few weeks were the hardest, but also the most rewarding. I earned my name, picked up some quality weapons, and met my sisters. <clears throat> earned your name. If you think a simple farmer from the Tears would name her child Verse, I suggest you visit my old village. Most of them were walking around with surnames like Barrel or Fish. Not the most creative bunch. She smirks and shakes her head. The chorus takes your name away. Whoever you were before, you aren't that person anymore. Then you earn back a name through great deeds, usually murderous ones. That's why you see choir men walking around with names like Stink Mouse and Face First. <laughs> There's probably a good reason for it. The voices of Narak gave me this name. When the Scarlet Chorus runs howling into battle, he doesn't hear war. He hears a symphony. And when I fight with blade or bow, he told me that my music stands out louder than anyone else's and contains too many parts to be easily defined. When you least expect it, the Archon of Secrets can be downright charming. Hmm. Can he now? Um, <clears throat> again, maybe a little bit personal, so we'll, we'll maybe ask these kind of questions after being with her for a little while longer, but, um, asking her about her proficiencies, they may come in handy. We want to know what we're dealing with. When I was just a kid, it didn't take me long to realise I was a natural. I could pick up a rusty kitchen knife and skewer a rat from across the room. The Scarlet Chorus gave me opportunities to further educate myself. My sisters were always a bit surprised by how quickly I took to different fighting styles. <laughs> she frowns for a moment, and then shakes off whatever she wanted to say. Yes. Asking about the, uh, the Scarlet Furies. The elite fighters of the Scarlet Chorus. Your typical horde recruit fights with a rusty spoon and a chip on his shoulder, but... The Scarlet Furies are, well, different. We focus our madness. We coordinate, we kill, we dance. It's like art. Imagine a sculpture that twisted in weird, beautiful angles and then gutted you too fast for you to realize what was happening. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> it doesn't sound like the kind of thing that Calvina is going to say. Um... Okay, that's uh, as much as we're going to ask right now. What do you need to know? Hmm. Calvina noticing a little bit of hesitation in verse when she brought up uh, the fighting styles. As if that's any of your business. If I wanted to say something, you would have heard it. Don't assume that I'm holding back. Ooh. Would we push our office on her already? <laughs> no, we'll leave it for now. And here I've heard so much about the fate binder of Tunan's tactical genius. But no one mentioned your bleeding heart. Your concern is cute, if you're insulting and totally unnecessary. It's a good thing that I'm feeling talkative, or else I'd stake you to the bottom of a latrine. I mentioned before that I'm good at picking up different weapons and fighting techniques. The truth is, I'm better than good. I could flay a man so cleanly that I'd leave a single strip of skin behind. You wouldn't even need to be tied down. That was one of the first things I discovered about myself after joining the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narat recognised it in me as well, which is why he singled me out for the Scarlet Fury training. Hmm, go on. My sisters were like the masters of their fighting forms, but since they died, my style has changed, almost like, like I can kill as they did. I could pick up a bow, a lance, anything, really. I could tear someone to pieces with a weapon that I only watched my sisters use. I don't know what it could mean. And that worries me. Yeah, asking about these sisters. Who were they would be more appropriate. Three Whispers, Red Geezer, and Seeking Sheath. Best fighters I ever met. There wasn't a foe we couldn't take down together. 
our fighting styles complemented perfectly. So we divided up the killing work like bards sharing a song. At least we used to. Hmm. Okay. Eh, we'll ask about them. If she's willing to divulge. We've gotten this far. Asking about three whispers. She was as calm as the surface of a pond and light on her feet. More than one foe tripped and fell on their own blade due to Whisper's crafty footwork. First lets her gaze slip away from you as a fleeting moment of sorrow steals her attention. Okay, Red Geezer. A one-woman siege breaker. She would launch herself at foes like a battering ram. Not even a disfavoured phalanx could have withstood that dumb suicidal wench. <laughs> Karras's eyes, but she was something to behold. First slams her fist into her palm. And seeking sheath. That girl could pass a spear through twelve rings from the far side of a battlefield. Kairos helped any foes who approached her marching single file. She made a game of spitting as many soldiers as possible on the same javelin. Hmm. Okay, we'll go there, asking what happened. We were scouting around Vendrian's well during the siege, back when only suspected the guard of organising in secret. My sisters and I came upon a group of them. Or oh, Kairos knows, maybe they found us. No one said anything. We drew iron and bronze. That was when everything went wrong. I was supposed to take point and occupy the guard with a dance of blade work, something disorientating, while my sisters picked their marks. I hesitated. I lost my nerve. Instead of rushing the Oathbreakers, I froze with my weapon drawn. My sisters fought on without me, but they were all off balance. Like whatever I had was catching. They died. I lived. My sisters were relying on me to lead the dance. And I failed them. Ooh. Understandable, cautious stayed your hand. Well, considering her sisters relied on her and she's supposed to be a Scarlet Fury, perhaps uh, her hesitation did indeed cost her sisters' lives. Maybe not quite being so harsh, but uh, yeah. Your actions were certainly not befitting of a fighter of your station. You are absolutely right. If I had witnessed the same in one of my sisters, I might have even killed her for endangering the rest of us. Good thing for me they didn't get the chance. She chuckles, but there's no humour in it. Hesitation is a rot. It's unbecoming of any chorus member and unheard of in a Scarlet Fury. I would cut it from my body and cauterise the wound if... if only I knew its source. Any thoughts on the topic or are we just here to open old wounds? Well, I don't think she does have an idea. Otherwise she may have mentioned it. But again, if we're going to have something similar happen around us, we need to be wary. We need to know. We don't want to be putting the firing line or at risk because of her incompetence. Okay, so she doesn't know. Questions more about sisters? No. Okay. What do you need to know? Okay. And who are the Scarlet Chorus leaders? Uh... We know who the leader is, but if there are any kind of high lieutenants, we're probably going to find them at the camp. But hey, we want to be four round with knowledge as best we can before we get there. Okay, yeah. The voices of the right is a spider at the centre of the web. He acts like the army belongs to him, and he only lends it to Kairos because it suits his purpose. Both of which are true. The rest are all offshoots of the voices, like the fifth eye. Once you get down to the rank and file, the Scarlet Chorus organise around a motley bunch of gang bosses who call the shots. What do you want to know? Eh, let's get some information on this Voices of Nerat while we can, shall we? <laughs> Maybe we can use some of this information to our benefit in the future. He's a madman, but that never stopped me from following his orders. Even in a legion as cutthroat as the Chorus. You know better than to get on the voice's bad side. People who cross him, or just people he meets, do not tend to survive the experience. 
If he ever seems disorganised or lost, it's because he's channeling one of the personalities he's devoured over the years. His mannerisms shift over to someone else, someone who's probably long since dead. Better to die than become part of the voices. Steals minds and knowledge of his victims. Hmm. Okay, so what makes him so powerful? He's the Archon of Secrets, and he didn't earn that title lightly. People say that he knows more than every sage and the tears combined, and that he can think a thousand steps ahead of the other Archons. It would be putting it lightly to say he's never alone under that disapproving helmet of his. If you make secrets your business, I guess having people constantly whisper in your ear is a good thing. I usually want people to shut up, but each to their own. Hmm. So there's somebody called Fifth Eye, and there's somebody, and then these gang bosses. Well, we'll talk about, uh, ask about Fifth Eye. A uh, walking nightmare, that one. I couldn't begin to guess who lives under that armour and speaks with that reedy voice, but I'll tell you what I know. When your world is built on secrets, it pays to have a few extra eyes. The voices of Narat has eyes in abundance, some that he keeps close and others that he sends out in the wilderness. Whoever the fifth eye was before he came into the Archon service, now he's just a half-mad jabbering speech hole, a bodily function, in other words, an eye. Well, of course his eyes are of people. Makes sense. As a spy master, to have eyes on the ground. How many eyes does he have, though? Hmm, the number keeps changing, either because it grows or because rumours don't mean shit. Three, seven, nineteen, some even say that all of us are eyes, and we don't even know it. She shakes her head in thoughtful disapproval. It's one of those questions that drives you mad if you allow yourself to think about it for too long. Hey, you could be one of Toonon's eyes. <laughs> Bet you never thought of that. Right, okay. We're not too bothered about the lowly gang bosses. So that's all we're going to get out of the Scarlet Chorus side of the conversation. What do you need to know? Okay. So, yeah, rather interestingly, whilst we were talking about um, <clears throat> her sisters... Asking how how is it that she's actually picked up her fallen sister's weapon skills? Hmm, it's been on my mind for some time, and I still don't have an explanation that fits. I have a few ideas, but hmm, Scarlet Fury share a sort of link. It's how we coordinate our dance in the heat of battle. We don't pass messages or anything, but our emotions and intentions sync up without words. She starts worrying one of her knives. After a moment, she sighs and slaps the blade back into its sheath. Go on. The one thing I always knew was that I felt this connection more keenly than my sisters did. I could pick up nuances that they missed, and I could feel them from farther away. When my sisters died, I felt each of them getting yanked out of my brain like someone pulling snails from a garden, but some of their slime residue was still there. Does that make any sense? Hmm. I they're definitely not down with all this soppy nonsense. But yeah, anything that could be exploited to you, to one's benefit should be uh, should be uh, done to the fullest. Hmm. Skill? Not sure I'd call it that. There's something parasitic about it, but I take your point. If there's an advantage to this thing I'm experiencing, I'm not above using it against our foes. No matter how you paint it, some part of my sisters broke off in me when they died. And now I'm left to deal with it. Just another day in the tears, right? Another day in the tears. Uh, okay. We'll talk later. So, uh, yes, excellente. <clears throat> we uh, have been chatting away whilst we've been walking to the disfavoured camp, passing the time, getting to know a little bit of information about the Scarlet Chorus, the voices in the rat. Could be useful, but... Uh, Good old Calvina has to tread carefully here because he doesn't sound like the kind of person 
that you can hide much from so she's going to have to be very very careful indeed so uh, I'm going to have to pause it now because I need to take a phone call so uh, I shall pause it and we will resume for you guys in a split second for me it might be 15 minutes so uh, yeah see you in a second okay so my phone call took a little bit longer than uh, I anticipated it took 30 minutes <laughs> Good grief. Oh, where did I leave off? Oh, that's right. We were about to go to the Archons camp. Or the disfavoured camp where the Archons are. Um, let's hit the road, Jack. Oh, we've increased in some abilities. I don't know how that's happened on the road. Did we encounter some ne'er-do-wells? Okay. Take what you can carry, but leave the cart. Otherwise, we seize you and your wares. Oh some some melodrama before we've even set foot in the camp proper. This is Kairos's law. That's when Calvina's ears prick up. Talking about law, are we? <laughs> Uh, uh, hail, Fatebinder! The disfavoured scout nods at your approach. Camp's on up ahead. Don't mind us just clearing out the rabble. I, I still don't understand what I've done to offend. I respect that these are now disfavoured lands, and I'm happy to give the Legion a proper toll. But she's going on about trading rights? What nonsense is that? I am not, am I, I am not allowed to trade one thing for another? It's not like I'm selling weapons to angry peasants or anything of the sort. Yes. <clears throat> You'll find that the Overlord regulates all trade. If you lack the proper permits, your goods are forfeit. Uh, uh, trade permit? Well, well, how would I... I mean, to, to whom would I speak for such a thing? Not us, and not our problem. Maybe march your butt to Bastard City and plead your case before Tunan. But we'll lighten your burden and relieve you of your wares first. That should make the long trek a bit more bearable. Yes, anything to be argued before Tunan. <laughs> this is not... Uh, yes, exactly. We are the uh, the voice of Tunan. Anything that can be argued <laughs> before Tunan may be argued before me. Well, 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 well. What's there to discuss? We should kill this mongrel and... The warrior pauses, placing her hand in front of her mouth. Calvina's giving her a very stern glance. Uh, if the faint bider wishes to weigh in on the matter, uh, courtesy demands we listen. Courtesy? It's more than courtesy, my dear. Uh, uh, this is a disfavoured matter, but I know the agents of the court do so love to throw their judgments around. Uh, well, uh, you could rob me now and have my supplies today. The merchant grabs a flask from his cart. Or you can leave me alive and have fermented honey all year long. I even know a few family recipes for painkillers and healing draughts. Certainly any army will need those. He uncorks a small ceramic vial, and the aroma of cloves and lanolin assaults your nose. <laughs> hmm. What a coincidence, sir. Calvina saying. Your family recipe for wound paste smells just like the Scarlet Fury's own concoction. <laughs> How she knows this, God only knows, but hey, she's a learned woman. Where'd you steal this from? I don't... The merchant tenses up his face, flushing red. I, I don't know what you're getting at. Hmm. Death already? Or a little bit of roughing up? He's trading without a permit. Now he's lying. He's probably stolen these goods. Hmm. Interesting. We don't have time for this. We've got Archons to see. Kill this liar and share the proceeds with the Legion. No, please! 
I can explain. How do you know a tearsman is lying? His lips are moving. <laughs> Soldier nods to her comrades, and with a quick flash of iron, the merchant is gutted. Hmm. Clean kill. Cleaner than he deserved, anyway. I would have done a better job of it, but uh, don't begrudge you carrying favour with those ironclads. Let's pick through what's useful. If you find anything of merit, report it to the Iron Marshal. And Fatebinder, thanks for making the right call. Every time we show the locals a dram of civility, they spit on our good nature. Let us never fall for their treachery again. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, we like the subterfuge to uh, open that up. Right. Slow down a moment. Verse saying. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics like a pair of magpies, but uh, I need to ask you something first. Uh -huh. Really? And what's that, uh, Calvina asking? The voices of Narat told me that you've come uh, as a mediator. Considering the source, well, I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story. So let's have it out. What's so special about you? So special? I see. Voices of Narat ask you to spy on me, did he? Huh. <laughs> At a loss for words, Verse regards you with a momentary unease. Well, are you even surprised? He's the Archon of Secrets, knowing in advance his is his business. So he's snatching up any advantage over Grave and Ash. Those two compete like a couple of new recruits for a spot around the fire. It's nothing nefarious. The voices is just curious why you're here. You wanted to know more? You wouldn't be able to suss it out that easily. He would have sent one of his scarier peons in my stead. Lucky for you then, and for him, that I don't scare easy. Calvina say. But uh, we are almost there and uh, you and them will soon know exactly why I am here. But out of interest, what else has the voices of Narat told you? Only that I could find you in Edgerin ruins. Truthfully, I could have picked you out of a crowd. You're the only one of us who hasn't spent the last few months bathing in the stink of the Matani River. <laughs> yeah, well, as I said, my presence here and the message I am to deliver will be soon plain for all to see. Shall we? Hey, don't let me hold you back. I'm sure whatever you're here to do is important enough that you don't need, uh, need me stepping in your path. The war tent is just past the centre of camp. One last thing. Be careful around these disfavoured types. They take their work seriously and have suffered too many blows to the head. Okay, excellent. Spy. Good job we haven't uh, divulged too much information then. We knew as much. Excellent. Right. The gate guard holds up a warning hand. Go no farther. You approach this favoured ground. State your business. I am Calvina, fate binder of Toon, and I bring words from Kairos. Words for your commander's ears. Ah, so you're the uh, <laughs> fire starter. Sivas and the companies returning from the burning library are telling some harrowing stories about Kairos's edict of fire. <laughs> I think myself brave, but I am happy to have been far away from it all. Must have been a terrifying honour to be the messenger of such righteous force. Uh, go on in. The soldier gestures toward the gate. The Archons are expecting you. You'll find them in the war tent. Center of camp. Ah, so the gates they open. Right. Archon, center of camp, lovely. Now there's a fair bit to explore here, but um, we are here 
on business and with one purpose, and we will not be distracted for now, so any conversation can wait until we have done what we need to do. Straight to the tent we shall go. And this must be it right here. Oh, hang on. What have we here? Ah, look at that. Standing to attention for the Fate Binder. Calvina. Riley smiling. Okay, now this should be an interesting conversation. So here we have Graven Ash, and here we have the voices of Nerat, Iron Marshal Arenios, and Fithai, who we've heard a little bit about, <clears throat> telling Verse just to uh, stay there. She doesn't listen. Typical. There's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The Tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. The Archon of War pounds his staff on the ground to punctuate his words. A large and imposing man to begin with, his profile is made larger still by his hulking suit of armour that hums with mystic energy. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery. But I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. Okay, so uh, whilst he's speaking... Calvina hearing voices in her head. Hm. Well, hello there, Fatebinder. We'll be with you in just a moment. The Icon of Secrets passes a scepter between his hands as he speaks, twirling the rod in hypnotic circles. Emerald luminescent seeps from the seams of the Archon's ragged red robes. The glow is most noticeable where his neck ought to be. His mask seems to float and spin, never pivoting or bending naturally. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. Hmm. This is as fearful as Versus sounded since we've met her. Uh, <clears throat> I am here to proclaim Kairos's edict. The valley was sealed in preparation for this moment. This is uh, Iron Marshal Irenios. Governor Calvina. Long have we been honoured by your iron, now we are honoured by your presence. I must apologise for my lord's tempers run high of late. Hmm, indeed they do. Welcome, Firestarter. We have been eagerly anticipating your arrival. Perchance you bring another of Kairos's edicts to savage the enemy? We were worried you'd never make it. So glad that Drastus's demise didn't cause further delay. The Archon of Secrets turns his attention to you. The frozen Rictus fashioned into his bronze mask greets you with a permanent smile. Yeah, how did he know about Drastus? That's what we're thinking. We're not going to say it out loud, though. I come bearing an edict of Kairos. Once again, you bring us support in a time of need. We fondly remember your service to the Chorus in the taking of the Bastard City. We knew back then you were destined for great things. But we had not anticipated you would be twice honored with the task of proclamation. So, do not keep us waiting. What is the Overlord's will? What is the Overlord's will indeed?
<laughs> you don't know your incompetence and disarray. The Overlord's loyal servants, she iterates, must hold Ascension Hall by Kairos's Day of Swords, or all in the valley shall perish. The earth sways with each word you utter, the air thickening with warmth as you pronounce the tersely phrased commandment. It's every syllable drafted by the hand of Kairos. With the edict proclaimed, your pulse quickens and the muscles in your legs, worn from a long trip down the mountains, feel renewed. The tired limbs now nearly buoyant with vigour. into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error and no other way out of this valley alive. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls, instead of through. So, you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? A baker's dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. Once again, the Archon of Secrets passes his scepter from one hand to the other. Hmm, and again we hear voices. Watch him squirm, so many tears of irreplaceable, expendable, useless soldiers. Uh, I miss the old Archon of War. You'd never see blood echo in a bubbling mess over a few dead killers. He'd used the knuckle bones of his best disciples for jewellery, and even made a breastplate out of his dead brother's ribcage, because that's how a real man deals with grief. Are you too daft? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. You need to learn to work together, or we are all doomed. The Fate Finder is right. We're acting not as leaders, but as children. I've no time for your foolish japes and petty taunts. We should focus on the objective at hand. And that is taking the Matani River, and then advancing to Ascension Hall, and ending this edict. <laughs> I trust you are done acting the clown. <laughs> God, some right pearl is in here. Well, I take it then, the time for talking is done. There is work to be done. Uh, my lord, Barrick and his band have been drilled on the Echo Call assault plan. The Crescent Runners should be briefing him as we speak regarding the latest enemy movements along the river. I will dispatch him at once. Iron Marshal salutes, clapping her gauntlet to her breastplate. Barrick, a commander of the Stone Shields and well regarded by the disfavoured High Command. We only know him by name. And I will ensure the chorus stands ready to march. If the disfavoured can take the river, the chorus has the manpower to secure the outer ring of the valley. Our soldiers clamour for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse, we command you to continue guarding the Fatebinder. Tunon's chosen is our honoured guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. Guarding? <laughs> you don't need guarding. I won't let you down, boss. She'll get through the campaign in one piece, as long as she doesn't do anything too stupid. I'd, uh, remind you I am standing here. The Archon twirls his scepter one last time, then taps the fifth eye on the shoulder and the two depart. Suit yourself, Fatebinder. 
the more you ignore us. Finally, the fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos's judgment, but I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunan favor him in the end. <laughs> Calvina thinking if I have my way and have any influence on this matter, he would certainly not be chosen as the favorable one at the end. Though the edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. You've shown your worth in war, and your name has been known to the Legion since the very beginning of this long conquest. So I'd ask that you join us this one last time to help us wrap up this last objective. If you wish to be counted amongst the Glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. I'm short a few scouts, short a few soldiers, short a few everything. <laughs> I'm sure my brethren will be grateful for the assistance of a skilled outsider. Yes, and uh, what help will the Scarlet Chorus uh, be offering? I ask myself that question often. While we take the river crossing, the Scarlet Chorus should be using their sizable presence to remove the Oathbreaker patrols lurking in the Outer Valley. The Oathbreakers has maintained a sizable force outside the Citadel. We need the Chorus manpower to scour the region, otherwise the Oathbreakers will attack at our heels once we cross the Matani. Yes, well, uh, honoured to help, certainly, if it means we get out of here in one piece. The Air Marshal salutes Graven Ash and turns to leave the tent. I will be at the training grounds readying the soldiers. Find me there when you are ready. She pauses, <clears throat> clearing her throat. And though I am loath to mention it, the Chorus can likely use your assistance. They certainly won't secure the Outer Valley on their own. Fifth Eye will be somewhere in that rat's nest they call a camp due east. Seek him out if you must. So we have proclaimed Kairos's edict, and all hell has broken loose. Speak with Iron Marshal Irenios to discuss how we should approach the battle for Echo Call Crossing. And also speak with the Fifth Eye at the Scarlet Chorus Camp, due east. Okay, but whilst we are here, and in the presence of an Archon, uh, maybe we might just want to get a bit more information. The Archon of War lets out a long sigh as he surveys the maps and models splayed about his desk. He glances over his shoulder, making brief eye contact with you, furrows his brow, and turns back to his contemplation. When I received the missive that said the fire starter was coming to the well, I thought... At last, we'll torch these fucking swine. But no, I was foolish to count on such things. May we speak a moment? Okay. Just a slight nodding of the head. Seeing as you provided the disfavoured with nearly a year of your life, ensuring that Levian's crossing churns out iron for our war effort, I suppose a little banter is the least I owe you. What is on your mind? <laughs> questions, questions, questions. Well, that's quite insulting. Uh, is it, though? It's an observation. A tactical observation, perhaps. This conquest has so spread thin. Every league we conquer must be held. I issued the call to assembly, but most of the cohorts remain trapped across the mountains. 
No bother. Won't be the first time I've had to do much with little. Yes. Okay. And what has been the hold-up? <laughs> the Akko lets out a long sigh, glaring at you with a furrowed brow. It is not for lack of trying. Earlier in the year, when the chorus was still gathering to the valley, I launched a raiding party to head straight to the Citadel. They never made it past the Matani River. With no disfavoured survivors and no chorus scouts with eyes on the situation, I know very little of what occurred, only that they died quickly. That left me short-handed and in need of more troops, and they've been slowly trickling in from everywhere, and I guess I've been guilty of waiting for my numbers to be overwhelming instead of merely enough. Yes, and what of the warriors left a garrison this region years ago? I too have questions about that. The Akon inhales sharply, his posture becoming defensive. His cold blue eyes stare at you with an unblinking intensity. I have reason to believe that when the garrison was taken, the disfavoured was slain, not by the Oathbreakers. And though I know it in my bones, I cannot prove the voices of Narat is at fault. Ooh. Interesting. Hmm. A very serious charge indeed. But if true, could this be the nugget of information she needs to bring the voices in her down a peg or two? What's your reason to believe such a thing? It is well known that I can protect my soldiers from harm, even if they are beyond my sight. What is less known is that I sense every cut, every kill, every illness. No harm to my soldiers escapes my notice. Of the warriors posted at the Vendrian's Well Citadel, only two were slain in the uprising, but a few others died later, and horrible, painful magic was involved. My son was one of those who died under such unusual circumstances. Oh dear, his son. Invested interest, then. Yes, the Tearsmen have customs against killing prisoners, if I recall correctly. I'd expect your worries to be slayed in the heat of battle, not after. Do they? I suppose I am guilty of paying little heed to what those hill folk believe. This makes it all the more troubling they died when they did. I need to consider what you have told me. Let us speak of something else. Archon of Stone? I'm not really interested in him. And, uh... Do we want to dig into this just yet? I don't think so. I don't think so. We've given him a nugget of information to think on, and we've been given a nugget of information that might prove to be useful in bringing the, the voices of Marat under Tunon's gaze. For the wrong reasons. We'll salute, turn to leave, and do what we must. For the glory of Kairos. The icon of war taps the haft of his maul to the ground for emphasis and turns back to his maps. Oh. Mm. Now, these aren't down as stealing, but I hardly think it's appropriate to go rifling through uh, containers in the Archon's tent, so uh, we won't do that. Okay, so we've got a whole camp to explore. Some named people. I think these are trainers, if the memory serves me well enough. Here's uh, Sevius, Bitterquip. There's probably a trader here as well, of some sort. So, lots to do, but uh, we'll get to that in the next session. I mean, quite a heavy conversation-based session today. So, uh, hopefully... Uh, We'll start seeing some action soon enough, but it's all about scene setting at the moment, story setting, and uh, I'm liking how it's developing. I am liking it. Uh, Calvina, she's a card. She's a card. But, uh, yeah. So in the next session, folks, we shall head out into the camp 
and uh, continue on. But as you can see, flashing up here, we've got eight more days until the uh, world comes crashing down upon us if we don't achieve what we need to. So, uh, yeah, time now literally is ticking. Until next time, see you soon.